Hey everybody, it's your girl Angie. Welcome back to Kiss My Cheeks TV. It is time to get into this Royal Housewives of Atlanta reunion part one review. I'm going to try to throw on black every Monday to kind of follow the dungeon theme of the ladies. I don't have too much fancy black. I actually have on a black sweater right now and I am hot. I am in Tennessee. The weather has finally I think reached up to 80 so this review needs to be quick because I'm ready to take this off I wanted to show off my earrings I found these cassette earrings in my collection and I just wanted to shout that out to Drew Drew girl I ain't seen a cassette since middle school so when I saw these earrings I wanted to shout them out to you for finding that cassette player to record the profit that was a mess but let's get into the reunion let's talk about how the ladies looked really quickly i didn't do a separate review so many people have the pictures and you know gave their critiques i wanted to do the same but you know i'm not as high tech so i just want to give my opinion y'all already have seen the outfits first the best dress goes for me goes to portia portia did the best from head to toe that short haircut portia that's it. That's your new style. Rock it, girl. Leave them wigs alone for a little bit. That short pixie cut does you justice. The accessories, the dress was amazing. It had her waist snatched to perfection. What I love the most about what Portia had on was those rings that were like diamonds that went all the way up to the nails. I love the accessories. So Portia was best dressed. Second was Kenya. I love Kenya's outfit. I thought it was very Harlem Nights-esque with that feather boa up top, all that drama. I didn't like the bedazzled jewels on the neck. I felt like they came up to right here. You should have left them there. I like the little sheer part over her slit. Like Kenya just looked really good. I loved her hair and makeup and her accessories. Third... It goes downhill from there. Third is going to go to Cynthia. Cynthia didn't look wow, but she didn't look good either. Like, she had a black dress. Whatever. The hair, when I first saw Cynthia weeks ago, when they first uploaded the reunion looks, I thought Cynthia was Marlo. That hair and makeup looked just <laughs> like Marlo. But, I mean, Cynthia's third. Up fourth, I'm going to give fourth. By default, I'm giving it to Marlo. I saw what Marlo was going for. Marlo has a standing dress. Like if you're standing and walking the Grammys or walking like the MTV Movie Awards, that's one of those throwback Tony Braxton, I don't need no panties type of dress. Shamia tried to shade her, talk about it's the fresh out of lipo dress. Who gives a fuck if she just had Mar lipo? Marlo looked good in that dress, but sitting it was not flattering. So fourth goes to Marlo. Fifth, I'm going to go ahead and give Candy fifth. Candy is one of those who did the assignment literally. <laughs> like she didn't give us an interpretation of the dungeon. She just straight said, this is me in the dungeon. I didn't like it. I love Candy. Candy's outfit is very sexy. I love it without that pillowy skirt that she said Rico Chappelle designed for her. If she just would have came out with her um, booty shorts and leather tank top and whatever she had on, it would have been sexy. The skirt ruined it for me. The hair and makeup was a no ma'am. Just a no ma'am. Leave it to Dita Vontese. Up sixth, I'm going to give six to... Toya, at least she gave me something. <laughs> She's another one who took the assignment too far. It just was an all sheer feathery fashion over mess. But it, it was better than what Drew and Shamia had on. Drew had on a dress. Drew comes next. Her dress, I would have marked Drew higher until I saw the reunion and saw those crystals in her ponytail. I said, oh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am, to that ponytail. You should just wear your weave. You don't need accessories for your ponytail with that type of dress. You already got a huge poof here, a sheer off the shoulder here, a hump here on your hip, a case there in the back. It just looked like Drew didn't know what she want her dress to be like. So she said, just put it all on there. Put everything on the dress. <sighs> 
moving on and Shamia is last Shamia did way too much the feathers were way too big the hair was way too big the makeup was way too dramatic Shamia was last but Shamia is just a friend of so she she needs to be last she shouldn't even hardly be out there let's get into the reunion at the first at first Andy talked about how everyone gained a COVID-19 that's funny but it's not funny most people during the pandemic, myself included, gained a good 10 pounds. I know I did. I lost my 10 pounds. <laughs> I wish I could have lost more than that 10. But it is what it is. You were sitting in the house, eating, watching Netflix. It wasn't nothing else to do. That part of the reunion was boring. Let's fast forward. At some point, Andy <laughs> wanted Kenya to verify that her ass was real. And Kenya was like, I don't know why everyone thinks my ass is fake. You know, just like any other lady, when you gain weight, you gain it in your ass. And the only time I've ever heard people say when they gain weight in their ass is when they have those ass shots. They be like, we're going to give you these ass shots and your ass going to look normal. But once you start gaining weight, it's going to go straight to your ass. Them the only people I ever heard say that. But Kenya, I'm going to say one thing. If that ass is real, get it fixed. Because it looks really bad. <laughs> And that's on period. Up next, Portia gets to go first. She gives a speech about Georgia turning blue, her activism, Stacey Abrams, all good stuff. Yes, let's get into the mess because that's why we're really here. We appreciate your activism, but nobody wants to watch that on Real Housewives of Atlanta. If we want to see that, we just turn on the news. Moving on. Kenya is pressed. Kenya's whole thing is, I believe in what Portia is doing, but I don't think she's genuine because why didn't she invite me to the PSA? Bitch, she don't like you. You have said she's done all of this for attention. She's doing it for a storyline. I wouldn't invite your ass either. I don't want to be around your negative energy. So you weren't invited. Move on. Don't invite Portia to your next thing. Who cares? What I liked that Portia said, she said, well, bitch, you doing all this talking. What were you doing from the curb? Where was your activism? I said, ooh, what were you doing from the curb? I like that. I tweeted that. I said, that was a good one, Portia. And then she said, well, what do you want me to do? Do you want me just to be quiet? This is why I see they had that scene deleted. I don't want to get into that because I really didn't watch Portia's live about the deleted scene, whatever. It, it sounded like some mess. But I agree, watching you black ladies argue on my TV screen about who was more active into activism was sad. I was like, this is bullshit. Y'all y'all shouldn't be arguing about this. We should be thanking each other for whatever the other has done and let it go. Any negative thoughts we have about someone doing towards the movement, keep it to yourself. That's how I feel. So let's move on. Um... Portia and Dennis are now in a co-parenting place. I don't care nothing else about Portia and Dennis. She says she kicked him out through the pandemic. No, girl, you kicked him out because his ass stay cheating. He stay having five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten women in the diner at four o'clock in the morning. And you over him embarrassing your ass. Move on. Don't break his ass back next season. Kenya and Mark are a fast forward for me. I really don't care nothing about Kenya and Mark. I feel like it's all lies. I've said it plenty of times and plenty of reunions. I honestly don't believe the bitch is married because now she talking about she done filed for a divorce. She done won full custody for Brooklyn. I'm like, you won full custody for Brooklyn probably the same way I won it. I got full <laughs> My son is 18 and I shouldn't be saying this, Teak, because me and his dad are in a really good place now. But at the end of the day, the facts are facts. I have full custody of my son because ain't nobody ever pressured me for no custody. You got full custody because I, I don't, yeah, I'll come get him for a week of Christmas. I'll come get him for a couple of days, spring break. But other than that, I ain't have no worries about somebody taking my child somewhere talking about they want some full custody. I had it because I was the one who wanted it. That's how I feel about Kenya and Mark. That man don't want nan full custody. He don't want none of the responsibility. Um... He liked to take um, social media dad, the, the pictures. He he liked to be in the pictures. That's it. We get to Drew versus Kenya. <sighs> that got on my nerve. But it's most of the reunion was Drew versus Kenya. Um, Kenya, you did call Drew astray. That is not a joke. 
it is Cynthia is a fucking idiot. I don't like Cynthia. I don't want to see Cynthia back because she in the amen corner. Cynthia never has a mind of her own. Cynthia, that was not a joke. She was being disrespectful. She said something disrespectful about Drew to you as a friend of Drew's friend of you should have checked Kenya and you didn't and you told me yeah it was a joke but she didn't mean it maybe you should apologize she took offense who wouldn't take offense to somebody calling him them astray and what pound did you pull them out of <sighs> so Kenya you started it Kent Drew you tried to finish it but I feel like you're no match for Kenya like everything you threw in Kenya's face was kind of late kind of tired and it wasn't funny um at some point, Kenya, I guess Drew, t <laughs> Drew told Kenya in some tweet, you talking about the definition of a stray, but at least my family all under one roof. Can you say the same? Some, some shade like that. Okay, yeah, we all know Mark and Kenya ain't never been on the same roof. Who cares? <clears throat> so she was like, you talking about your family being on the same roof? No, your baby daddy under the roof of a jail. And I said, ooh, <laughs> Kenya hits you low. It could be a fact or not a fact. Kenya gonna hit you low or Drew talking about, oh, you wanna go low? I'm like, bitch, you gotta go low. Don't even ask Kenya. You just gotta go low with her because she gonna go low with you. So Drew is kind of took back. And I'm like, Drew, you ain't true to it. You, Phaedra, you are not. Nene, you will never be. Like, Drew, go ahead and sit in the friend of chair or go ahead and just be off the show. You are no match for Kenya. You need to do what Eva did. How you know Eva that first season tried to come for Kenya or argue with Kenya and Eva realized Kenya ain't a match. Let me just be this bitch friend. Just be that bitch friend <laughs> because you're not going to win in a Kenya versus Drew. And Kenya is easy to read. That's why, you know, she done made up with Marlo because she tired of Marlo on the ass. I would have told Kenya like, well, at least my mama would let me under her roof. You know, at least I ring my mama doorbell. She opened the door for me. You know, you got to hit Kenya with something like that. But let's move on. Um, Kenya and Halloween. I feel like if Kenya would have wore, Kenya did wear her Native American whatever costume for Halloween. If Kenya would have came right out. And say, look, I spoke to Native people and they told me this, this, and this. And how this was disrespectful. And it's not, we shouldn't use their costumes as a mockery or as, you know, for Halloween. You know, if she would have just came out and apologized, point blank, period, we would have let it go. But since Kenya's first response was, oh, well, I'm Indian is in my heritage. You know, you didn't try to understand. You just wanted to try to come off with, well, I can do it because I'm Indian. You just like all the bitches who um, come out and say, well, I'm Afro-Latina, so I can say the N-word. Like, that's what that's the vibe you were trying to give, and you wouldn't let no Afro-Latina off. I'm saying it wrong, but you know what I mean. You wouldn't let them off. That's just like saying anybody who get one of them ancestry things, and they get 5% Nigerian, oh, now they can say the N-word? Like, no, bitch. You not Indian, or Native American, so you can't wear the shit. And if you was Native American, you would understand why. <laughs> so that's why you got dragged. Because you wanted to pull the race card of, oh, well, I got a little bit of Indian in my family, so I could wear it. And then when Andy called you out, Andy, Andy said, well, where does the Native American come in your family? Well, my auntie lived on a resort in West Virginia. You know, my family from West Virginia. I'm like, bitch. Why did they let Kenya live? <laughs> I wouldn't have let that slide for nothing. You know what? This sounds like a storyline. Have y'all read? I know y'all read The Coldest Winter Ever by Sister Soldier. That was a good-ass book. She just had part two come out. That is a good-ass book. Part two, Life After Death. But anyway, in between, she had a book about the sister Porsche. Or Portia, whatever the sister's name is. Porsche, I believe. And Porsche was in the juvenile detention and she met up with this rebel girl and they snuck out the juvenile detention home and um snuck out of jail and they went to a resort and lived on the resort with the native people to escape being found out you know and have to go back to jail that's how when Kenya said that I said has she been reading since the soldier 
<laughs> she sound like Porsche talking about why well, I lived on the native land. <laughs> I can't stand. I can't stand Kenya. She is a very easy read. You all let Kenya live so much. It's like <laughs> y'all could break this bitch down so easily. I guess maybe we can see it because we're not in it. But I'm like, come on. I would not have let Kenya live with that. But let's move on. Um, I do agree with Portia. Portia said. When you mess up, you always want to apologize and you want people to accept your apology and give you grace, but you don't give other people the same grace you look for. Like, you want us to let it go when you do wrong, but when we do wrong, you got to talk about it to every person you see all season. <laughs> right? Like, you wearing the... I'm going to get in trouble. The Native American costume is worse then Portia fucking stripper, but you ain't see Portia bring she ain't Portia ain't have to go call Eva and say, like, Eva girl, you know, your girl had on a Native American costume. You need to go get her, you know. <laughs> but you had to tell everybody you saw that Portia fucked this stripper. <sighs> this needs to be a two-part reunion because <sighs> stripper gate needs to be two minutes. Portia just needs to say, I fucked him, and everybody shut up and move on. Um, but let's move on. What happened next? Oh, Ralph gets to come out and Drew gets to embarrass herself even more. <laughs> Ralph comes out and the first thing they want to talk about is the old daddy. I hate it. Andy was sitting up there calling him old daddy. I think he was being sarcastic and Drew and Ralph didn't pick up on it. They were like, yeah, that's the old daddy. <sighs> Candy says she appreciates the scene of Drew bringing the father on and that Drew was like, I'm helping other single parents. As a single parent, you ain't helped me. As a single parent, I am with Kenya. The scene was cringy. The scene was hard to watch. The little boy did not want to be one he didn't want to be there and then it's very clear he didn't want to be there on camera he was very uncomfortable you should have introduced that boy to his father off camera let them have some kind of comfortability some kind of interaction where they can have a good conversation and then if you want to introduce your baby daddy bring him on but that all that and eh, eh, maybe here eh, almost there but no all that shit was cringy to watch and I wouldn't, I wouldn't put my child through it. I wouldn't because I know the pain behind it. But girl, like that, that's your baby. And one thing I'm going to say about Drew, you don't want nobody to critique, critique your son to say if he cringy or not. Don't put his ass on TV. Don't do it. That's all Twitter is for. They critique everything they see on that show. If you don't want nobody to say nothing about your child, keep him off the show. All that in, 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 keep it off the show. Um, Drew and Kenya was fighting some more about it. She crying all her, she trying to do her best tears. And I see why you ain't got no acting jobs. You couldn't pull up a tear for nothing. I am so disappointed in you, Kenya. I can't believe, it. I would never forgive you. I would never forgive you. <sighs> Bitch, Kenya don't care. She really don't want your forgiveness. Um, let's move on because next we get to hear about Tampa and that's all I gave a fuck about. I knew Ralph was going to lie. <laughs> I knew he was going to lie, but I wanted to hear what kind of lie he had. He was like, oh, the beach is just where I go to clear my mind. And everybody's like, you passed 10 beaches before you got to Tampa. <laughs> None of those were it. And then Andy says Tampa is the stripper capital of the United States. Now, I didn't know that, but hey, he was like, I wasn't with any strippers. I wasn't with any women. And Drew was like, I believe him. He's never given me a reason to believe he's cheated on me before. He's never given me a reason to say he cheated on me before. And I'm like, okay, you um friends with Tisha out in Huntsville. <laughs> because, you know, uh, hold on, hold on. Hello. What? Okay, hold on. Let me call you right back. So, <clears throat> the kids. So, 
Now Ralph in a private counseling has produced a receipt for the hotel he was in, in Tampa. He produced dinner receipts that said reservation of one. <laughs> and she looked on his Fitbit to see that he done ran a couple of miles up and down the beach. So he really was trying to clear his head. But what the fuck was he doing the other hours of the day? <sighs> the lies. I just can't. It's a very bad storyline. It sounds like you wanted to be spicy and you wanted to play with your marriage to get on this TV show, but your husband is not a good actor. You really ain't a good actor either, Drew. And you all don't know how to pivot out of it. And I think I said it on Twitter, like you don't know how to pivot out of this Tampa storyline because it sounds so ridiculous, but people are invested in your man left you for three days and... <laughs> You ain't got shit to say about like you don't know how to pivot out of it. Like Kenya doesn't know how to pivot out of this marriage. Like, yeah, you were on the beach taking the marriage pictures. But now that the man don't want to be with you, you don't know how to get out of saying you're divorced because there's probably no legal paperwork. <laughs> I'm not going to believe Kenya is divorced until <clears throat> y'all, y'all YouTubers Y'all love to watch YouTube as much as I love to watch YouTube. Y'all know Alexander Rogers. He reads Fulton County down about Fulton County keeps your business in the streets. Kenya lives in the capital of Fulton County in Buckhead. That's right. Dab in the center of Fulton County. Buckhead. Why has no one... Because all of this is public records. No one has reported that Kenya has file for divorce no one and I bet you no one ever will <laughs> but let's get off of Kenya I'm over Drew in this Tampa thing um Drew says her marriage is perfect for her good for you girl because it wasn't it ain't perfect for me even if you gonna bypass Tampa Andy why do you you didn't talk about the cameras in the house why didn't you bring up to Ralph, why are you calling your woman every 10 minutes? She's sitting up at Porsche house like she can't even go to the grocery store in peace. Y'all didn't bring any of that up. But don't nobody want Drew's husband but Drew. She said Kenya was making googly eyes at him. Who cares? She googly eyes everybody's husband. Your husband is fine, but don't nobody want his ass. Up next, Toya comes out, calls... <laughs> Calls Drew a SpongeBob. Some about the barber threw some vitamin C. Drew tried to apologize. I believe Drew should have did better say, I ain't had shit to do with it or that didn't happen. By you apologizing, let me know that you sent that person up there to do that to Toya, whatever. They fight and on the next week. We'll see what happens. But anyway, let's like, comment, share. And you know I will be back next Monday for the reunion part two. Bye.